It's over now. Perfect pound cake. Man, go down to East Hartford, see our friend Tamika Mitchell, and get yourself a perfect pound cake. Unbelievable. Whoa, dibs. You got that like a minute ago. (laughs) (laughs) That's how good it was. That is one of the best desserts I've ever eaten, and I'm not lying. It's just pound cake. It's just pound cake. It's perfect pound cake. Uh, They're located on Burnside Avenue in East Hartford. Go see Tamika and the ladies over there. It's amazing. It's got kind of a little of a, I can't describe it. It's like a, a vanilla almond in kind the of pound taste. cake. Yeah, in yeah. the pound cake. And that reminds me of all the Italian cookies I've eaten in my life. <laughs> all I mean, pounded just, together into yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> it's just amazing goodness with, with vanilla ice cream and strawberries and the whipped cream. That's to die for. See, there's, there's nights where I'd rather eat that than dinner. Like, I might have to have another one of those instead of eating dinner tonight. Because you got to count your calories. Oh, of course. But that's what it's um, all about. No, that was awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. I mean, they just brought them over. <laughs> they got a lot of them, man. Well, they, they really heard enough of hers talking about smells. It, it, <laughs> it's killing us being next to all this food. It's the toughest thing. All right, let's talk some daily pickle. Daily pickle. <clears throat> I mean, obviously the Yankees are in a, in a pickle right now. We were talking about the Mets a little bit earlier. Um, but without Aaron Judge, and I was listening to the broadcast last night, and they're talking about his swollen toe. Yeah. And it's it's – Honestly, you know turf toe. Describe turf toe. Well, for football players, because you don't want to say, "Oh, yeah, what do you got? A, what do you got? A bad nail? You got a bad toe? It, it, it's into the bone." Yeah, you don't want to put any pressure on it, and you don't realize how a pain in one toe, and the big toe is the worst one because yes. it's got the biggest ball and socket flange there on, right. your, on your bottom of your foot. So every time that you step down, it's unavoidable. The only thing really is time, and then if you did some painkilling for it, I don't think he can damage it much more. Um, but, yeah, every, every little step you take is going to be painful. And for him, I think playing the field when he comes back is out of the question for the week um, and maybe even running around the bases. But swinging a bat and being a designated hitter is probably where he's going to come back. But... Yeah, as much as, you know, everybody's saying, because I've heard a couple of people say, tape it up and get out there. We've got a long way to go. Yeah. And this guy in particular, <coughs> in my opinion, is the linchpin of success for the New York Yankees. Most definitely. Last night we thought it would be a pitcher's duel between Lance Lynn and Severino. They were both awful. Uh, Lynn goes five, 98 pitches, gives up five, th- walks three, didn't have great stuff. Severino, on the other hand, Really good stuff. He got beat up pretty heavily by the White Sox, but they had a 5-4 lead. He was able to turn it over to their bullpen, which is how they win a lot of their ball games. And Michael King gave it up. I just told my wife, I'm like, this guy's an all-star. <laughs> He's having an amazing year. Went into the game with a, a uh, sub-2 ERA. Um, hadn't given up a lot of home runs. He's just got great stuff. He's got a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. Uh, great break and stuff change up. And he gives up. A um, couple of big runs and uh, goes two innings, gives up two runs, and that's the difference in the game, six to five uh, for the White Sox. That have been struggling to score runs. Right. Um, they've lost a lot of punch in their lineup, um, and they, they go to 28 and 35. Yankees are at 36 and 27. But that that's everybody is having issues because a lot of these teams can't get their starters past the fifth or sixth. They can't get length. They can't get into the seventh. They can't get into the eighth. Any team that's got a couple of starters that can go that long. You brought up Alex Manoa. Alex Manoa was sent back to their minor league facility, spring training facility down in Dunedin, just to just to get right, get his head straight. Because going down to the minor leagues for a guy that's an all star in the major leagues is going to do nothing for you. You're 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 getting guys that swing and everything, anything and everything that comes into a minor league hitter looks great, looks like a beach ball. I'm swinging. So it's not going to help you if you go down there and give up five runs in two innings down there. That's going to hurt your confidence. So for a guy like Manoa, he's got to get back to thinking, I can go through the lineup three times, get you 21, 24 outs, and and give the rotation length and and take something off the bullpen. But if you look at like Severino or even Lynn, four guys have to come out of both of those bullpens. Uh, King went two innings. Tommy Canely came in. It was too little too late. Uh, and, and they, they couldn't get a run across in the ninth inning in the Senate extra innings. But the bottom line is we're, we're just a couple of months into the season. We're about 70 games into the season, 
and you put so much pressure on your bullpen. Guys on the bullpen are going on the IL. Yep. Uh, guys in the rotation are, are either getting surgery or going on the IL because they're worn out. And now you're starting to see a lot of teams beating up. Mets had three straight games with a three-run lead. Their bullpens can't hold them. This goes back to the Edwin Diaz injury because it pushed everybody to a different level, meaning uh, a, a diff different pressure level of, oh, my God, now I'm the bridge to the setup guy to Seventh the closer. Seventh comes right. eight inning, exactly. eight inning comes closer. And, 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 and here's the worst thing about the six inches in between a pitcher's ears are the worst part of his body because then he starts thinking. And if he has one or two bad outings, he starts thinking, is my job in jeopardy? Right. Is my livelihood in jeopardy? It's, it's, it's a pressure job, man. And so being a bullpen guy in today's game is, is one of the worst positions, I think, on a baseball team because they put pressure on you every day. Even when you're not in a game, you're warming up a couple times. So that's killing your arm. And you can't tell anybody my arm's killing me because then they're going to they're gonna get somebody else and replace you. So it, it's, it's a really – uh, sticky situation for a lot of these relievers, even the best like a King. Um, you know, Canely just came off the I.L. Yeah. You know, I mean, this guy's been hurt for a long time. So it's, it's uh, you know, it's, 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 a it's a difficult position, um, but it's one that now is paying you handsomely to be one of the best in the game. Tell me what you think about Clay Holmes being a closer for the New York Yankees. Assess his performance and what do you think he's going to do in the next couple of months at that role? I, I just think that Clay Holmes or, or even David Robertson, you know, you're going to have your ups and your downs. <clears throat> Here's the thing. You can go a stretch. Let's say you go five or six wins in a row. You may not pitch because every one of those is not a safe situation. So unless you get constant work, being a closer is the toughest job um, there is in a bullpen. You need I, – I hated being a closer. I like pitching five out of seven days. I might pitch a third of an inning one night. I might go two and a third the next night. I might go an inning the next night, um, but come in jams all the time. I was better in bases loaded situations than starting the ninth with a three-run lead. That sucks. Right. I was like, there's no pressure. There's no adrenaline rush, and you're coming in, and you're starting out instead of coming in and saving someone's bacon. I, I, I honestly, I'd rather come in and save my, my teammates than having to try to save the game. And so I, I never flourished. So, yeah, I have 89 career saves. Um, most of those, I didn't love being in that situation, you know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a different monster. I like the seventh and the eighth inning, you know, where Randy Myers, he liked the ninth inning. Right. He could go. This, this is Randy Myers uh, when he was the closer. He would sleep for five innings in, in a uh, recliner. He'd get up, he'd ride the bike in the sauna for a half hour, and then come out in the seventh inning ready to go. I, I would have lost <laughs> my mind. That is crazy. I would have lost my mind. Now, right. I've told this story many times. I was a smoker back in the day because I, I, I wanted to play. I was a everyday player, right. played a lot of sports. It was hard to sit there and watch two hours of a baseball game and not be involved. So it drove me crazy. I had, to, I had you know, a lot of time to kind of, you know, get, get bad vices. Um, but for me, I was working out with the trainers. I was working out in the weight room. I was riding the stationary bike to get up a sweat. Then I would go out to the bullpen in the seventh inning. And then <clears throat> the seventh and the eighth inning, my, my innings, that was – I was the most comfortable. That was the, only, that was the only hour of my life every day as a major leaguer where this is what I'm here for. The rest of the time was like idle, craziness. Batting practice sucked. That's why Norm and I, you saw the picture online yesterday, that's why we got into so much trouble all the time. Yeah. We, we went and we explored every, every stadium. You're bored. You're bored. <laughs> <laughs> You're bored to tears, to madness. And, you know, sitting around, you know, plane flights, flying, hotels, things like this. This is why guys have problems. This is where they're created um, because you're, you're sitting around waiting for the action to happen. Big weekend this weekend. I can't wait. Red Sox, Yankees. You can't wait for this one, huh? Should be playing more. I agree with that. And you would think that this <clears throat> well, has Red Sox have been miserable lately, especially defensively. Red Sox have been miserable. You don't have Aaron Judge. Verdugo didn't run out of ball. That's why he got taken out of the game two By nights ago. By the way, Verdugo won't be in the lineup, I do believe, for tonight's game. I, I've heard that he is going to be punished for the lack of hustle. Which, again, this isn't like 12-year-old AAU or Little League. I mean, you, you can't punish these guys. You can just basically say, listen, don't do it again, or, you know, we might have to trade you. <laughs> that's that's the bottom line, but we've got so many guys that are programmed 
Like even I, I love this new this Dela Cruz kid. I love him to death. Ellie Dela Cruz, yeah. Uh, Ellie Dela Cruz, his first home run in the major leagues. He celebrates like he's got 350 in the major leagues, because again they they play ML, MLB the show. They think that's the way things are supposed to be done. People don't really retaliate anymore, except for Charlie Morton hitting Alonzo the other night because Alonzo was talking smack. So the game is just in in a, in a different. Uh, you know, stratosphere right now. I some like some guys are hot dogs. Some guys don't know they're supposed to be hot dogs. And then there's other guys that just play it straight because that's the way their their DNA is. It's a combination of old school and that's new right. school. And, and you know what? And when they meet, it's ugly. Yeah. And that's why Alonzo got drilled by a 95-mile-an-hour fastball. Now, Morton wasn't intentionally doing it, but he was coming in uh, inside to, to send a message, which is the same thing. I didn't like to hit guys, but I like to come in and say, hey, knock off the, the – the, You know what this is this, for. This is for. Yeah. This is why you're on your back. Right. So, I, I mean, I, I think – but then you've got other guys that they, they continue the nonsense. Listen, Verdugo, to me, is harmless and to, until he hurts himself. And that's, that's when you're upset with either, you know, not – going for a fly ball properly, which we talked about Roberts and Benintendi the but other night. this team's one of the worst. Right, man. but the, the Red Sox right now have guys that are playing out of position all over the field. Right. So the lack of communication, the lack of hustle, all of this stuff, this comes from coming and not having a defined role. Not knowing when I show up at the field, I'm your right fielder, I'm hitting second in the lineup. Sometimes Verdugo's first, sometimes he's sixth, sometimes he's third. This guy doesn't have a defined place in the lineup. So am I a leadoff guy? Am I, am I a base stealer? You know, I mean, so, you know, listen, he's, you know, I, I, I won't get on guys for the way they dress because I was a cheesy and tacky kind of human anyway. Um, <laughs> he's but got a I, lot going on, If man. I could have wore a bunch of gold chains, if I could have had a mullet at the same time, I would have been that guy. <laughs> that would have been my MO, right? So I'm not, I'm not going to chastise these guys. But, you know, if that's your game, stick with it. Right. Sometimes I see this guy with the chains hanging out and the and the, all the uh, different you know elbow pad and, the, and the, going on. the Betty Crocker mitt and all the others. And then other days I see him all tucked up, yeah, all buttoned up. He's got the chains in because he hasn't gotten a hit in the last twenty at bats. Listen, dude, if you're zero for twenty or you're nineteen for twenty, I don't care. Just be that guy all the time. Be consistent at what you're doing. And so honestly, that's what I think Alex Cora is trying to teach these guys is consistency. And he's watching some maddening baseball right now. No Aaron Judge in these ball games. Who is the best player here in this series? Rafi? Um, I would say Rafael Devers is is your best player. Um, I, honestly, Glaber Torres, when he wants to be the best player, Had can be the best player. Yesterday. Can be the best player on either team. I don't know why you're throwing fastballs to this guy, though. I think pitchers don't know how to pitch to Glaber, and that's what he's taking advantage of right now. He's, like, proven, you know, throw this guy junk, throw this guy stuff low, and he's going to swing at it. Now, he swings at stuff out of the zone all the time, but when you, you give might, him a fastball inside, he's going to rock Might it. see your best player tonight. This guy might start the all-star game for the American League, Garrett Cole. I agree you, with that. And you might I also – you that. could also say he's the flakiest dude in the big leagues. I, I think that – I agree with that you know, as well. Again, again, see, listen, I don't ever think the spider tack was th- something he had and depended on to be great. It's when you're great, you don't want to not be great. So anything in your life – you want to stay consistent. So if I was, like for me, I had the Gatorade and the rosin that I rubbed up the ball all the time, and I thought that was part of my routine to be good. Yeah. And and so, <clears throat> you know, the cigarettes and all the other stuff, all the other stuff was routine, you know, based. It wasn't, you know, oh, I, I can't play without this. I need the pine tar. I need to be a cheater. You know, I never had to do the performance-enhancing drugs, yet I always had to have some kind of painkiller. And, and whether or not I pitched or not, it didn't matter. Some guys used speed, amphetamines, stuff like that. There's guys that watched every game when they didn't pitch or play on amphetamines because they, they, could, not, they could not survive without their vices. Well, I totally agree with that, and I always tell you about, you know, my hands, I'd always like the ball of duct tape, and I'd roll that yeah. up in my hands to get it as sticky as possible for football, and when I wouldn't do it, it did feel like it wasn't – like, I could wear gloves. I could get that stick somehow, some way. But it was really a moment of, oh, crap, I didn't do my duct tape ball thing yeah. that I normally do. I need to go back and do it, right, but now exactly. it's too late. And it was, like, more of a routine thing. And, again, for Spider Tag and Garrett Cole, this was a substance no one knew about that was made up by the guy from the Dodgers. The Angels. Angels. Yeah. And, you know, this was kind of new on the scene 
where – But but we went when we played the Cubs, we had a guy when we had a hangover, the only thing he'd ever make that was any good because his spread sucked was macaroni and cheese. Right. That was the only thing the guy ever made that was any good. It was homemade macaroni and cheese. It wasn't like Kraft. Right. Um, even though Kraft is great. I won't upset them. But um, th- this guy would make a huge pot because he knew that half the team would be hung over because we were out till 4 o'clock the, the – you know, and we just got up at 9 a.m. and couldn't eat breakfast. We were throwing up. Right. And if there were steroids in that, you wouldn't have known about it. I wouldn't it, have right? known about it. <laughs> hey, listen, <clears throat> you don't get me started on that. <laughs> Trust me, that stuff was in the coffee nearly killed Joe Nuxall. He never knew about he it. He didn't know about it until he knew about it. I'm looking forward to this series, though. <laughs> I'm kind of rooting for the Red Sox just to even things up. And I'd like to, to get see the Red Sox the go on a run. Uh, yeah, go on a run. But the, the only way they're going to go on a run, man, is if they play solid baseball, meaning, like, don't have as many errors in the field that are so bonehead. Don't be getting caught up in rundowns that are so bonehead. And have productive at-bats. Like, just digging in a little bit more for this team because I think the talent is there. I think their youngsters are starting to get it a little bit. Those averages from some of those guys are picking up. Uh, but – this series, again, I, I say the same thing I do for the Mets Braves. It's very important, not only the rivalry, but just being in a division and playing other division teams means twice as much as what it did this year compared to the years of the past. I mean, you got Chris Sales on the 60-day IL. You got yep. Schreiber's on the 15-day out of the bullpen. You got Blyer. You got Rodriguez. All these dudes that eat up innings are in, in – they're in the training room. And that and, – and, but that – is that's that's basically the recipe in the major leagues right. right now. You know, we've gotten to the point where we need eight guys in a bullpen. We need five guys that can only go 15 outs. It's killing the game. You I know, so and then too. people are telling me, well, we need to find guys that are linked. They won't do it because they, in their brains, 20 years ago, people thought that it's going to save you from Tommy John or save you from some other. And it's never worked. The, your your formula has never been proven right by less throwing. So I. Not that I want people to start going back and throwing 300 innings a year, but I'd like guys to get it out of their minds that no, what, no, no matter how you throw, that you throw as long as you can until you can't anymore. We were talking about this in the studio, watching the replay of game two before we came out here to the taste and just watching Clevenger throw, watching Holmes throw. And, you know, they're hitting 98. They're hitting 100 on the gun. And I, and I was trying to tell the guys about 2008 Kansas City Royals and how they ended up winning the World Series yep. through this new technique of one-inning relievers, yep. which sounds great in a strategy world, and especially when you're playing seven-game series. But in 162, and you got guys going out, 100% for 25 pitches, let alone 55 right. pitches, you're tearing that arm up. If you've got a guy throwing about 80% that's making a start that goes through eight innings, that is so huge for your team moving forward through the week. So huge. And the, the disconnect that I have with Major League Baseball in this conversation or when we have the conversation about launch angle is like, when the hell did you pick this up? Because when you were in college, pitcher speaking, you threw nine, sometimes ten innings on an extra inning ball game, hit 120 pitches, and all of a sudden you get paid where you think we're paying for that. Right. Nah, we're going to back you down to 80 only and shutting you down. Why? Like, there's because, uh, I don't know, we got this guy coming in after you who's going to throw 19 pitches at 100 miles an hour. And that makes sense for the day. It makes sense for the day. But when that guy gets hurt, and you're bringing in who knows who from AAA or AA, right. and now we're starting all over again. That's every team in the major leagues. And it's just weird that the trend hasn't bounced back where people are seeing this, and they're asking themselves, what has changed? To me, it's 2008 in the Kansas City Royals, and you're bringing in guys that are pitching one inning, throwing 20 pitches at max effort. And let me make a couple other points here real quick before we go to break, and, and you, you talk to Andy Serling. Um, Molina was a mainstay with the Cardinals for 20 years, one of the best catchers, Hall of Famers. You went to Contreras, you changed that whole formula. They've been having a miserable year, pitching, hitting, everything. It, it just changes the, the, the whole uh, complexion of the entire team. You, same thing in Boston. Vasquez was the catcher for the last five I years. I think about this a lot. Um, yeah. They got rid of Vasquez. And I'm not saying Connor Wong's not, not good. I'm not saying McGuire's not good. It's a, it's a, it's a different voice. It's like a different manager. You know, and, and, you know, some pitchers don't want to throw to those guys. You know, so it's the same thing in New York. Now you're trying to work in a 20, 21-year-old Alvarez as your starting catcher. You know, every couple of years, two years ago it was McCann. You brought in James McCann. So, I mean, when you change things like that, now the Red Sox, you, you get rid of your uh, Trevor Story will come back. Um, but you got rid of Xander Bogars, who was there for like six, seven years. By the way, people at the Taste uh, told us they're now Padre fans. Because yeah, because of, uh, Xander, Xander Bogarts went there. 
I'm 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 not a Dodger fan, but I love Mookie Betts. I know, me too. You know, JD so Martinez. exactly. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We're live from the Taste of Hartford. Uh, Andy Serling. We'll talk some ponies next. Yeah.